Hi, my name is Shakima Monique Clark, and I'm the author of Silent Tears, Inside the Soul of an Abused Child, and this is Behind the Grind. Welcome to Behind the Grind. I'm your host, Erica Austin. Now remember, if you like today's episode or any other episode, please hit the like and subscribe button. Joining us today, we have a very special guest. She's the author of Silent Tears, Inside the Soul of an Abused Child. Everyone, please welcome Shakima Monique Clark. Hi, how you doing, Erica? Great, I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm awesome. You look great, by the way, as Thank always. Thank you. So let the viewers know a little bit about the book because I'm not sure if everyone even read it, but um, can you give them a little insight on it? Okay, the book is my journal and the topic is sexual abuse from the age of 4 to 21. I um, was abused by different people throughout the years and my way of coping was to write. I kept a journal mm -hmm. and 2011 I decided to put it together and publish it. Mm -hmm. And the end result is Silent Tears. Oh, right. Now, yeah. this is this your only book, or do you have another um, one? Currently, <laughs> this is me, my only book. I am working on the second one, mm -hmm. um, A Better Me. Hopefully, it'll be out by the end of the summer. Now, has anyone in your <clears throat> family read the book, and how do they feel about it? I'm not, I know some people have read it, and mm -hmm. others have just heard about it. Okay. And I've gotten mixed emotions. I've gotten support, mm -hmm. I've gotten apologies, mm -hmm. and I've gotten... Well, if we had known about it, we would have done something. You didn't tell us, so. And there was no sign? They didn't see the sign? They didn't see you act different or anything? They, some people, like now, mm -hmm. looking back, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, your behaviors make sense now. Mm -hmm. And others who were around, they were so high all the time that they probably, oh, wow. So it wasn't, it wasn't just wasn't abuse, it was drug-related? Drug abuse, okay. yeah. Have you taken any of the drugs? Have you been forced to take any of that? No, I've never used any drugs. Okay. I don't even take um, prescribed okay. medication okay. Un unless I absolutely have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now the person or the people that have done this to you, um, they apologized? I haven't had any apologies from any of them, no. Oh, wow. um, I did have one person, the um, poem I remember. Mm -hmm. I. The, the person at that poem is about, I actually ran into a few years ago, mm -hmm. and he tried to intimidate me, and which prompted me to start to write, which is how I got this poem. And I saw him, I carried it around with me because mm -hmm. I realized that he was living in that area, mm -hmm. and I carried it with me in hopes of running into him again, and I did, and when I saw it, I gave, him, gave it to him, and I let him know, listen, I'm not a child anymore, oh, wow. I'm a woman, mm -hmm. and this is a whole new ball game. Now, is that the one incident? The incident? That's no, not the same that's person. not the same okay. person. Um, that's a different person. First, okay. Yeah. Wow. Are you married? I am not married. And no not kids? Yet. No children. Not now, yet. has this stopped you from, you know, wanting to walk down the aisle and do the whole marriage thing? Absolutely not. No. It did for a long time have me in a position where I was choosing the wrong type of people. Okay. You know, I found myself with the same type of guys over and over again, and they weren't physically abusive or anything, but they were drug addicts or drug dealers or, mm -hmm. so just still being in that cycle. So it took a long time to find my way out of that cycle. Did you have siblings? I have a younger brother. And he dealt with this with you or? Um, he yeah. doesn't talk about it. His, it okay. The only way that he ever acknowledged it last year or the year before, he purchased a book for his girlfriend, and that was his way of acknowledging it. But he doesn't talk about it. He, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's no discussion about it. You want kids in the future? Or Absolutely. You do. I want to. Oh, check you out. Okay, boy and a girl. Two boys, yes. two girls. Okay. Boy and a girl, twins. If if if, if I can knock it out in yeah, one shot. I would love a boy and a girl. A yeah. boy, preferably. Um, what have you learned? What's changed in your life since the incident? Um a lot. I've learned that I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. Right. And sharing my story taught me that there's so many other people out there with the same story. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just my story. I'm just the voice at this moment right. for the story. But it's not just my story. Mm -hmm. And people are much more accepting than I thought they would be. You know, you have that fear if I come out, 
no one's gonna believe me right, 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 or right. they're gonna be judgmental. Have you had the negativity thrown at you yet? Um, very little. Okay. Very little. And that's by people that I know. So mm -hmm. I in my opinion, they're being convicted mm -hmm. by their own guilt. And they just don't want to acknowledge it. Yeah. Gotcha. So I let them live in their moment. Everybody has a right to their own truth. Mm -hmm. And But I know what happened and I just move on. Now I read part of it where you felt like you were just good for sex or that you, you know, you wanted to commit suicide. And To me, you are a hero. I'm not, you know, Thank I, you. A lot of people in your situation probably would have committed suicide, you know, the little things bother them, but you actually came out a lot stronger. What advice can you give the audience now if they're going through it? I would say to tell and tell until someone listens mm -hmm. um, and definitely seek help from mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. anywhere because carrying it around is, it, it's a burden and it, it's, it's actually almost more traumatizing, if not just as traumatizing as the actual situation mm -hmm. because you're reliving it over and over and you're reliving it alone because right. no one knows about it. Mm -hmm. So telling is definitely the, the, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a must and it's the beginning of the healing process mm -hmm. until you talk about it like even for me I wrote about it mm -hmm. but and I thought that that was getting it out and it was healing mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I started to speak about it that I actually started to feel relieved okay. so yeah. this helped you to overcome everything by yeah it was the beginning of the healing process okay yeah now is there any hotlines that you can give anybody the information to the call if they need to talk to somebody or there is the ring i cannot i'm bad with numbers okay. since cell phones were invented mm -hmm. <laughs> but the website is rain.org r-a-i-n-n.org mm -hmm. okay um and all their information is on the website and they're a 24-hour hotline and they actually give information for local areas okay. so if you can't find anything in your area if you contact rain they'll mm -hmm. connect you okay great yeah. i did not know that i may have to pick that up you know i got a little issue with that. <laughs> but um actually you know we're gonna take a short break but i would love for you to read maybe like two or three poems to everybody so they can get understanding if they haven't read the book and everything like that would you be okay with that yes absolutely all right great so everyone we're gonna take a short break but when we get back she's gonna read two or three poems from her book so don't go anywhere we'll be right back Hi, my name is Shakima Monique Clark. I'm the author of Silent Tears, Inside the Soul of an Abused Child, and I'm going to share with you one poem titled, Dear God, Where Are You? Mommy is out getting high. Daddy is in jail. Grandma has her boyfriend and baby brother is beginning to cry. I am only 10 years old. I don't know what to do. Dear God, where are you? Mommy is smoking white stuff from a medicine bottle. Baby brother is sleeping next to me, and I'm being fondled. Grandma will come home later and find some reason to yell at me. Auntie will be here shortly after to ensure that we keep the peace. As I sleep, a strange man knocks at my window. I'm only 11 years old. I don't know what to do. Dear God, where are you? Mommy's eyes are wide, and she's acting really weird. I think she's high. As I walk the streets to escape her, I get snatched up by a neighborhood guy. Ripping my clothes off, he's holding me down. I'm scared beyond scared, and I can't make a sound. He's inside of me now, and I don't know what to do. Dear God, where are you? I spend many nights awake. I spend many days looking for a trusting face. I'm only 12 years old, and I don't know what to do. Dear God, if you really exist, where are you? The next poem that I'm going to read is titled Silent Tears after the book. Lying in my bed, I was sound asleep when someone quietly entered into my bedroom, awakening me. He covered my eyes from behind so that I couldn't see. With me lying on my stomach face down, he slowly lifted up my gown, kissing me on my back and gently pulling my panties down. His body then entered mine. The force was bad, but I didn't scream or cry out loud. I was careful not to make him mad. He softly kissed me on my neck and whispered words into my ear. 
I gripped the sheets and bit my lip as my eyes filled with tears. His breathing became heavy and inside of me he exploded. He said, I love making love to you, but it's important no one else knows it. I inflict pain upon myself. I hold this secret in. I walk about hanging my head in shame. I just want this pain to end. I spend most of my time alone. I'm withdrawn from my family and peers. Sleep, sleepless nights, eating disorders, nothing but silent tears. Hey everyone, welcome back to Behind the Grind. All right, you just heard two recitings from the book, Silent Tears. So um, please tell everybody where they can find this book at. The book is available on Amazon and it's also available to be downloaded on Kindle. I'm working on getting it on iTunes as well. Um, the title again is Silent Tears, Inside the Soul of an Abused Child by Shakima Monique Clark. I can be found on Facebook under my name. And if you live locally on Long Island, I could also bring a copy to you for a price, of course. Oh, it's not for free? <laughs> not for everyone, no. But you know, for Eric Austin, it's for free. Yeah, I got okay, you. thank you. <laughs> And they, are you on Instagram? Are you on Twitter? Or are you I on am on Twitter at S. Monique Clark. I'm not on Instagram. Well, okay. I am, but I don't use it. That's so, right. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I'm heavy on Facebook. Okay. And I do use my Twitter account. So I got to start using that account. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you guys next time on Behind the Grind. Hi, my name is Shakima Monique Clark. And I'm here today with Behind the Grind. I'm a survivor of sexual assault, and I'm here to encourage any other survivors to speak out and get help. I want to let you know that you're not alone in this fight. There are many resources out there. There are different coalitions. There's the RAIN organization, and there are people around you. So if you're living through this, I encourage you to reach out to someone and begin to get help because the only way to begin to heal is to break the silence.